this wonderful night, another fantastic year for Adelaide Turf Cricket, the Adelaide Turf Cricket Umpires Association 2023-24. The final's not too far away from the exciting time for everyone. Great to see so many familiar faces and a massive night that we've got to get through and get everything done. No smoking here in the afternoon, please. The toilet's tucked in behind me if you'd be understanding. And I'll get you just to uh, pop your phones to silent if you wouldn't mind, please, just so it doesn't embarrass anyone. Speakers, our presenters, etc., etc. Um, so much, as I say, the game in such good spirit and uh, in such good, uh, in good hands with Adelaide Turf. The great uh, results, and as I say, the uh, finals not too far away. So, a very, very exciting time. My pleasure now, please, if you'd be good enough to make him a uh, very, very welcome, as he deserves to be, the president of the Adelaide Turf Cricket Association, please, Richard Hayden. Thanks, Richard Gilbert. Fast-changing world. 
The umpires and scorers association, although small in numbers, their dedication and commitment is unquestionable. And we thank Ken Barthelson and John Rolfe for their roles in the governance of this very important fraternity. Well, umpire Brendan Whittlesey, who always gives me a hard time, is about to call play. We're all set to go, tension is growing, and now it's time to call our boundary rider, Mr Wayne Phillips, back from the interchange bench to get proceedings underway. Thanks, Wayne. Thank you, Richard. Yes, uh, off the interchange bench. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. 27 Test, 48 One Day International. First of our awards, and we'll get through these, please. You can, Richard, do stay on, please, and make the presentations. Those who do receive, same. You can just make your way across to the photographer's booth here and uh, get those done as well. The 40 Years Distinguished Service Awards. We'll be called up uh, individually. If you are present, please be making your way up. From the Adelaide Turf Cricket Umpires and Scorers Association, Paul Thompson. Congratulations. <laughs> Painham, Graham Vincent. Actually, the next of our award winners, unfortunately not with us, Don Van Einem Jr. from the Painham Cricket Club. Another from uh, Painham. And that is Grant Wozniak. Thank you, Grant. Congratulations. <laughs> to wrap up the 40 Year Distinguished Service Awards, the uh, final one for the year goes to Woodville South's Graham Wiley. Congratulations. <laughs> Golden Grove, 
Brett Jenner from Marion, Wayne Meakin from Golden Grove along with Rick Moran from Golden Grove, Adrian Nipris from Goodwood, Aaron Richards, Prince Alfred Old Collegians, Cameron Shearer from Grange, Damien Stamato from Golden Grove, David Wakefield, Caraca, and Sam Woods, Golden Grove. All of them are 15 year service awards. We've got the certificates available for you or a club representative. Thank you. Just a little promo as far as the raffle, the Adelaide Turf uh, Cricket Umpires and Scorers Association do such a job getting it done. $5 per ticket. You see on your tables the opportunity. I think they'll take cash, they'll take credit cards. I've got FPOS available. They'll be making their way around the, the, the room and making sure those uh, tickets get sold. A terrific prize again, and thanks to the Ark of our great supporters, the accommodation and dinner voucher. There's a, uh, a dozen bottles of red wine, just delightful. A $200 drum and golf voucher. $100 herringbone restaurant voucher as well. So get yourself involved, grab those tickets, and we'll draw that a little bit later in the night. The next that we present is the Limited Overs Awards. My well, pleasure to uh, ask the Adelaide Turf Cricket Association Treasurer, Tre Treasurer Peter Smith to come forward, please. Thank you, Peter, and to make these presentations. Thanks, Peter. Here we go, in limited overs, Division 7, with the bat from Appleston, 479 runs. Christopher Hunt, congratulations, Christopher. Right. We've got an absent note here, Pete. Uh, absent, my apologies, thank you. With the ball from Woodville Recovites, with 30 wickets, a terrific year in Division 7. Liam Hopper, congratulations, mate, from the record. Division 6 now. And across for the photo, please, once you've picked up your certificate. Thank you, mate. Well done, Christopher. Thank you. Limited over to Division 6. From the Blue Brigade, with the bat, 499 runs. Uh, Deep Champ to Kata. Well done to you, Deep Champ. Well done. Ball. We've got a tie, 31 wickets apiece. From Hectorville, Tamara De Silva, and similarly from Woodville South, Jackson Gaylar. Congratulations, gents, for well that you both. Come up and grab your certificates. Well done. Excellent. Over Division 5. For the batting now, with 471 runs, Huppenet Singh from the Paynham Cricket Club. Congratulations, Huppenet. I've got an absent there, but congratulations. And with the ball from Fulham, 35 wickets for the season, Ali Zaman. Division 4. And with the bat from Adelaide University Cricket Club, 453 runs, Dennis Sester. Well done for you, Dennis. Congratulations, 453. And from Trinity Old Scholars with 32 wickets, Matt Knox grabs the bowling trophy. Well done. For you. Division 3 now. And with the batting, a very strong year it was from Sacred Heart All Collisions, Collegians, 575 runs. And the batting award goes to Gavin Regan. Well done to you, mate. And another from the Blue Brigade in the uh, 28 wickets with the ball. That's Prashant Bagheel. Well done to you, Prashant.
To Division 2, the limited over competition, Division 2, and with the batting from Old Scotch. 482 runs, Samuel Plus, well done. Plusy Lake, good lad for you. And from Ross Trevor, Old Collegians, well done with 31 wickets. Jesse Hoffman, well done for you, Jesse, good. One now. And with the bat, 661 runs. What a good year this is from Pembroke Old Scholars. Monim Maddy. Well done, Monim. Well done to you. And with the ball, 37 wickets from Gazer, Daniel McDonald. Congratulations, Mac. Well done, buddy. the last for you, my friend, and that is the uh, C1 grade now. These are the award winners for season 23-24. With the bat from Trinity Old Scholars, 568 runs. From Trinity, as I mentioned, Daniel Newman. Well done, Daniel. And with the ball... Range Cricket Club with 34 wickets for the season. A terrific performance there. I refer to Peter Jump. Well done, Peter. Yeah. Yeah. Cricket. So this award's in its 31st year, 
um, and this year's winner has for a number of years performed many tasks at his club. So the winner of the ATCA Administrator of the Year for the first time, Nick Pike from Ingle Farm Friends Club. <laughs> Round two, 
Growing a Tanty is usually a good thing, but they love it at the cattery. Steve and Greg Tanty both had good days. Alicia Cape or Ethan Rice had his second five for 24 in a row, but Bright retained the Cappuccino Cup easily. Put some money on the voice of Brighton to win it. The Prem had some mates in Marley and Kuma who guided them home against rocks. The one-man wrecking machine, Josh Rosenthal, saw his side home in an outright. Spockers brought Jeps back to earth. Gunner, Harry and Georgie all in the stats. Round three, a century to Brighton's Glenelg recruit, Matt Wormsley Pace, saw them home in the Southern Stouch. The Prem was no match for Jeps. Seabit, Panda and Patel leading the charge. Prince did Prince things, and Tansy did more than spit the dummy in 6 for 52 for the Cats. Brumby stuck home by three. Chris Moran led in charge with runs and wickets. The Marshals did some damage, but Nick Playfield starred with match figures of 9 for 40 for Princes. Robin Chislett led the roost to victory over Unley. Ollie Jeffries with 113. Round four. Five wickets for Unley President Ollie Smith saw them home against Golden Grove. Brighton racked up over 400. Jack Hatt and Matt McInerney both made hundreds over Goodwood. The French trading, Hamish Lepastrier, was unbeaten on 109, the spot over at Aladrie. Welcome to the ATCA, Patrick Page Jr. PPJ had the records chasing leather for most of the day. The fantastic rock of 170 in a draw. The AOC's Playfield with 9 for 45 to continue his hot streak. And Arthur Sarhouse with 139 for the Rams in the draw match versus Walkerville. Here, there, as we look at the 18 leaders board after round four. From the Adelaide Lions, nine votes are Premachandra. From Spock, uh, six votes, all three of these on six. Kunakalake, uh, Jeps Cross with six votes, A Saha. And from Walkerville, with the six votes, as I said, S Tanji. That is the leaders board after <laughs> round four. We'll go to the A1 leaders board. Time to have a look at the first four rounds of action. A1 round one. Hamish with 8 for 54 saw Old Scotch defeat Hope Valley. A Wilkins finished with 5 for 19. Is this the bowl off of the A1 award? Finnis Park skipper Lockie Tosh led his top oh, yeah. over rating Premier's Google with 65. Wordsworth. Travis Wordsworth. Age of 121. New recruit Matty Herman led the way with bat and ball with Brackers win over Port Districts. Matty White did all he could for the Cats in their loss to the Finns. Chad Sayers with runs and wickets, and Mick McDonald with five poles, I'm sure Craig will be around the mark. Round two. What noise is a bear, mate? Brrr. Back to cricket. Finners Park's Josiah Grip might have a hard name to pronounce, but the 4 for 42 sounds easy. Curtis and Trav thought they were playing backyard cricket and saw the Hornets home. Fletch fell one shy of 100, but the Valley's got the win. Woody South outgunned Brokers, Dads and Lance team. Andy Highlands 104 leading the way for the Cats. Alfie led from the front with 81 in Goodwood's win over Ingle Farm. Ollie Jackson with 7 for 94, just 6 shy of his 100, showed he will be a class bowler this season. Round 3, JJ in the runs again for Baraka and Hamish leading the way with ball for Oscar. The Bulls recorded a big win. Range piled on 242 thanks to Aaron Sayers with 72, bowling out Marion for 167. Michael McDonald continued his strong start to the year with 6 for 74. Harry Hills inflicted an outright loss on Port Districts. Grant Carey shagged by his King Carey with 4 for 32. Trinity also won outright. Ali Forward unbeaten on 50 and Sports Centre's Tom Cousins snaring 4 for 14. Callum Brokery to score a second in his tons to improve his average. Round 4. Port Districts went large. Charles Rogers with 103 saw them smash Western Suburbs rival Woody South. White and Roberts contributing a game for the Cats. Mark Barber celebrated getting his pension card in the mail with three wickets and some lamps right the Range made 230, Burrows with 93, but that was it. Woodward didn't get away on day two. Fletch had match figures for 8 for 29 as the Valleys won outright over a luckless Lewis Park. The Slapper took three for Trinity. Lee and Herman both in the runs of wickets for Paraka. As we now have a look at that leaders board after round four in A1. And a very, very good year again from Para Hills with nine votes. Travis Sports, worth a lot of From Grange, eight votes. And McDonald, Baraka, all of these now with six votes. And Herman from Baraka, Baraka again. Jay Jarrett, Hope Valley, have Pennell with six. And from Old Scotch, H. Winter Irving with six votes. That is the leaders board after round four.
of the uh, A1 season it is. <laughs> Time for us to have a quick break. Uh, your chance to get involved and keep the conversation going. I'm up to page 7 of 24 here at the moment. <laughs> Terrific news, a little reminder on the raffle. Please be supporting the site. We'll see you back here shortly. Enjoy the upgrade. Thanks, everyone.
Dutchman play of the, uh, the umpires for our grand finals. You couldn't have to come forward. John Roll, please. The uh, Atlanta Cricket Umpires Scorers Association Secretary. Thanks, John. Well done. Okay, so, uh, LO7, Unley versus Lawson Lakes. Stephen Vandelaar and, oh, wait a minute, that's different to what I've got written down here. <laughs> that's a good start. Okay, well, that one says Wilson, but I've got Melbourne Green here, so I'm not really sure what's going on. We'll work it out. <laughs> LO Division 6. This one's got <laughs> these are different, completely different again. This is going to make it even more interesting. I got Ross Chinnyap and, and John Williams. Minor correct? Okay, thank you. Rodeo. Take no notice of screens. This is what I'm saying, which is what I tell people all the time. All good. Lo five. Payton versus Fulham. Brendan Whittlesey and David Palmer. Lo four. Hope Valley and Pembroke. Cameron Aitken and Sean Richards. <laughs> LO3, Mawson Lakes versus Shock. David Cochran and Robert Claxton. Yeah! 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 Those two joined at the hip all the Can't have Tweedledee without Tweedledum. Yeah, yeah. LO2, Pembroke versus Polby, Paul Thompson and Stephen Thurman. Yeah! Alright, we're on track again. Excellent, there we go. LO1, George Lataris and Andrew Schmidt. C1, PAOC versus Trinity Old Scholars, Andrew Tyson and Merlin Amos. B3, Adelaide Uni versus Brighton, Kim Alley and Will Scott Young. B2, Adelaide Lions versus Blue Brigade, Grant Potter and Colin O'Donnell. B1, Ronella versus Hope Valley. James Gooch and Michael Wilson. So that one's wrong too. It was supposed to be me actually, but anyway, I'm talking about um, A3, Payton versus Hectorville, John Frick and Neil Clark. A2, PAOC and Spock, Wayne Graham and Ken Bartleson. And the A1 umpires, Graham Wood, well that's just a given, isn't it? Slot in this year, congratulations, Trip, Michael Chipoti. Thank you, John. Well done to you. Very, very good. Uh, congratulations to the umpires on their appointments. Hope it all goes well for you. Next to present. Thank you, Donald. I'll get you to do this, please. The Stevenson Cox, the most improved umpire. Not here? Thank you, Donald. Uh, the winner, Kim Allen. Unfortunately, not with us, but congratulations to Kim. No and the green, Ed Ryan, the best first year umpire. And unfortunately, again, no, not with us, George Lacaroulis. Congratulations. <laughs> no, one more. Yes. Robert R.W. Ryan is the limited over player of the year. This is awarded using the LA Turf Cricket Association bonus point system. So point uh, zero one five for a run and point three for a wicket. Works out that uh, a very, very good year. With 14.56 of the votes, 331 runs, 33 wickets from Port Districts, they're from Rasa. Well done. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, John. Well done to you. Very good. Next to our awards, please. I'll get Rob Muirhead, please, if you'd be good enough to come forward. Thanks, Rob. Tough. Just pop your beer down there. This is the next set of the awards, and these to the outstanding performers as we go through the grades. B3 grades. With the bat from 
Brighton Cricket Club, 368 runs. David Morgan. Well done, David. Thank you.
Marion had their noses just in front, having caught districts 5 for 72 and for a fly to 125. The wind's making 30 on them. Flinders Park and Woody South spent more time at the halfway hotel on Port Bright than at the ground. And Travis lost all his cash at cards from Card Shark and Mason Rickard. Ground 6, Blue Sky, Sun and Winter Earth with a Pfeiffer. Just a normal Saturday in the cricket season. I was spotted one by two wickets over Flinders Park. Redem and Andy Lee saw Barat home in their win over Grange. Aranga is in the wickets again and sees Districts home in a close one. Chris Pokey's between ended up on 116 not out. The one armed bandit hasn't played since this great knock. The drama pool last over saw the Hornets sting the ruse. Tommy Kane was scoring 90 with the back for the victors. Whitey ended up 13 shy of a ton and Woody South's win over Marion. Round 7. The Sailors unbeaten 50 was enough for Grange to beat in the farm. The Hemsworth boys, I mean the Wordsworth boys, played both 40 in a tight game against Scotch. Hamish again, the bigger the bowlers with three wickets. The Valley's home with Polly and Fleet scoring 50s. Welcome back, Potter was the cry around the toss of day. Alex with 51 on day one for Trinity wasn't enough. The Cats winning by 100 runs. Mark White making an impressive 1-1-1, one, 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 well supported by Andrew Harlan. Tim McKipper taking 7 for 23 for Woody's and their win over Dizzy's. Round 8, Harry Caton, after shaving for the first time a week earlier, showed Woody the charity in his match when he got to see Barry Hill's win at his long. Choo choo, the farm train is coming. Will the boys make it to the top four? Holly McDowell showed his class with that ball. Same special, saw Grange nearly top and truly outright. Jared Fernell with five wickets was the game the leading life for Trinity. Hamish again showed why he must be up there at the end of the year in the medal count. Wickets and runs in the losing team. Willie Pohl. Round nine. The tosses win a close one with Fernell 7 for 82. Hamish with a five for Scott. Grange with a comfortable win over the Clarks. Here's with a half century. Came in the runs again with an unbeaten century and the win over the Cats. Marion in an upset win over Broker, who is with 60 and 8 for 19 with three votes. JJ the only one offering any resistance. Farmers make a run for the top four with a win over districts. Barber and Staff with that win the wickets. An all round team effort saw Woodland win over Hope Valley, despite strong efforts from Polly and Fletch. After round nine now in the A1 competition, we look at that leaders board uh, with 12 votes. Barra Hills, Travis Wordsworth, well done, Travis. Another with 12 from Baraka, M. Herman. Also with 12 from Trinity Old Scholars, J. Purnell. And another with 12, C. Broderick from Goodwood, the man who leads. So 19 votes from Old Scotch. Who else? H. P. J. Their presentations, Sean Matheson, please to come forward, Sean. Matthew Pirelli from Wolverhampton. 
Liverpool could be at 7.91. Hassan Dinamatu from uh, Adelaide Lions at 7.82. And Rose Deep Singh from Brighton at 7.62. Well done, Kelly. Thanks, Kelly. Keane, the A1 keeper of the year in uh, A1, as I mentioned. And from the winner from Para Hills, and that is <laughs> Harry Caton. Well done, Harry. And the finish with uh, 7.8. Last from Trinity Old Style is 7.71. Josh Sharrett from the Farm, 7.6. And Lockie Russell from Grain, 7.44. But the winner, Harry Caton, 7.8. Well done, Harry. <laughs> Thanks for that presentation. It's my pleasure if you come down to come forward, please, to make some. The next of our two awards to be done, page 11 of 24, exciting nights. Two awards, and these the J.U. Jansky Memorial Trophy, the most outstanding Premier A1 fielder. And the winner of this award from Gilbert is Callum Roderick. Congratulations, Callum. <laughs> Callum, finishing with 22 votes. Fantastic year and going so very, very well with the voting. With 261 runs, 45 wickets from Old Scotch, I refer to Hamish Winter Irving. Congratulations. Developing, 
And um, if you're having fun, you want to keep learning, you want to keep growing as a player and athlete, then keep going. Is there one special one that you remember who came out and played with a smile on her face and, and got the job done? In my team or? Um, I'd probably say uh, a young girl called Ella. She's very committed, um, very good skill set, and yeah, when she puts her head to it, she does well. She's allowed to. For you, what's going to happen next year? I mean, you keep saying about how popular it's been and how successful it's been, but it's just going to keep getting bigger. It's going to, yeah. it, it comes with challenges as well. Yeah, for the, the young ones, we've got a couple of um, that will be coming up. So we've got Aurora, who is the coach's daughter, but is incredible. Uh, we've got an upcoming talent, Ollie, who is contributing as well. Um, and I think for us, the reason that it's increasing so much is because we've got so much support from the main members of the club. Uh, there's a real equality there. So it's not, there's no difference between women's cricket and men's cricket, it's just one cohort. It's now cricket, you're, you're having a game of cricket, you can do that. What happens with training and the opportunity to have to share facilities and that type of thing? Yeah, we've been timetabled in, so again, shared equally. Sometimes the men come out and support us as well, uh, give us the hard balls that we don't necessarily face so often. Um, yeah. Exciting time for next year now. I mean, yeah, when you got that premiership, you're going to be the hunted. Uh, what, are you, what can you expect? Uh, hard games, but we're all going to have fun. So we have fun, we play well, and we hopefully get the results again. We hope you do as well. It's just fantastic for the association to have this uh, this input that you're bringing to the table, and we wish you all the very best. Look after those young ladies and enjoy the game. Congratulations to those premierships. Well done. story, isn't it? Just the success the young ladies are having and the enjoyment they're getting from the game. It's, uh, it is just brilliant. brilliant. Joel, I'll get you to come forward from ISC team where please if you can do enough job, okay? Thank you, mate. Your support uh, is just so vital. Thank you. The women's second grade, these are the individual awards. <coughs> With the batting, with 551 <coughs> runs. Amazing performance from Port Adelaide. Becky Hayes. Congratulations. <laughs> And the 
bowling from Barrow Hills with 23 wickets, Tamara Clapton. Well done. Tamara.
13. Thank you, everyone. Delightful main courses, thank you. As always, the ARC, they do a fantastic job. Their staff, they've done so very, very well. Thank you. My pleasure now, if you've been good enough to come forward, to make a terrific announcement. This one, Neil Clark, if you'd be good enough to come forward. Thanks, Clark. Good time, mate. Good. Okay, um, it's about halfway. Uh, what happens halfway through our cricket day? It's afternoon tea. And uh, as you know from the uh, umpires, and we're most of you are a fairly portly bunch, uh, we do appreciate our afternoon teas. Um, so we thought we'd probably try to reward the clubs, uh, or a club, um, and, and represent all your clubs for the, the hard work that everyone does with afternoon teas. So we've got our umpires to nominate which one we thought was the best afternoon tea. Okay, and um, yeah, lots of different criteria, but um, we had uh, lots of good entries. You know, honourable mentions to Flinders Park and Grange. Honourable mention, honourable mention. You know, yeah. Woodville South, very good. Port Districts, uh, there's some really good ones around. Uh, but we uh, decided, after a rigorous voting process, uh, that we were going to award the best afternoon tea to the Goodwood Cricket Club. Now, the, the award for someone from Goodwood can, can come up. Uh, the award's got a bit of a cash component to it, so we want to say if there's someone special who does the afternoon teas, uh, give them some cash, right? uh, or, give, or buy them something. Thank you, mate. But everybody was great this year. Fantastic. Keep it up. You might win next year. <laughs> well, I came up here because I'm the fattest guy in the club. Thank you very much. Congratulations to uh, Goodwood, the afternoon teas of the year. And uh, yeah, it would be a very interesting voting process, I'd have thought, for that to, uh, to get to uh, that situation. Time now to chat uh, with a couple of the, uh, those captains uh, from the A3 division. They've got coming up in the grand final. It'd be great to have a chat and just find out where they are with the clubs and their players and what the expectations are. The A3 captains. From Paynham, I refer to Duncan Dolling, and from Hectorville, David Harmon. Come on up, guys, please. Hey, you mate. You all good? Good, thanks. Good. Good. <laughs> thanks, everyone. That was... Uh, it's all very civil. Yeah, a couple of days short of the game. Yeah, how's it going to be on Saturday? Guess we'll see, won't we? Um, I, I don't know. Don't know about you guys, but I think we've probably got a little bit of a little bit of a rivalry with uh, with Payne and being so close. Um, so yeah, I think we're all the boys are really keen for keen for the game and keen to knock them off. Okay, you get the chance to respond to say. Yeah, it would be pretty pretty in agreement with that. I think it's a good rivalry with the Hectorville boys. It has been for a few years now, so I think we share the ledger one one for a couple of years. So yeah, it'd be game on on the weekend. But do, do, do you take that with you when you go into the game, or you just try and put all that aside and just concentrate on what needs to happen on the game in the game? Uh, no, we'll leave that where it, where it was. We'll just yeah concentrate on Saturday Sunday and yeah make the most of our opportunities out there. Agreed with that or not? Or you say, no, stuff these pricks. We, you, you watch this, you reckon, yeah, we'll take them, don't you worry? Um, oh, no, nah, probably, yeah, probably the same. You can't really take too much out of, um, like, out of the regular season. Finals is a different game, so, um, you know, we're really excited. Why, why are you going to win? Oh, don't want to say it, but uh, they beat us with, and we were playing with half a side, so <laughs> pretty, uh, pretty keen to play with a full side. So they've got something. They're going to bring something to the table for you, mate. Yeah, they're going to bring a bit more than what they brought through the regular season, so we'll see how we go on the weekend. <laughs> what's, up on the, uh, 
What's up on the whiteboard for Paynham in, uh, in your rooms before the boys go out? What, what are those four, five key messages on the whiteboard? <laughs> uh, no, it'd be just, yeah, control what we can control, make the most of our opportunities and, yeah, don't give them an inch. And for you guys? No, oh, we don't write anything on the whiteboard. We know what we can do. Um, uh, we've got, <laughs> we got bloody 11 match winners, so um, yeah, I think everybody knows what they can, what they're able to do. It's going to be fantastic. Well done. It's a great spirit. So we wish you all the very, very best. Go well, boys. Thanks a lot. Really appreciate it. Well done, mate. Thanks, bud. Thank you. Thank you. It's going to be a bit of fun, that one, isn't it? Jesus. Payton and Heckies out there. Duncan Dolling, David Hayman. Thank you, boys. Well done. My pleasure now, if uh, he'd be good enough to come forward, the Tom Cousins from the Sports Centre, the A3 Awards. Thank you, mate. Thank you, Tom, and we'll uh, get to the, the batting. This in A3 for the year. Terrific year from Brahma Lodge Cricket Club with 466 runs. Benjamin Pye. Well done, Ben. Good. Well done, buddy. Good lad. And one who's in pretty good form, obviously, with the uh, grand final just around the corner, but a fantastic year in A3. 44 wickets. So he's going to ask some questions on the weekend. Don't you worry about that. From Paynham, Joseph Richter Gilbert. Well done, mate. Right. Right. <laughs> Time for us now to go through the reading of the votes. Round 10 for A3. The match is Brahma Lodge versus Fulham. And the votes go accordingly. One vote. Brahma Lodge, A. Summerton. Two votes, Brahma Lodge, B. Pye. And three votes from Fulham, N. James Boylan. Ingle Farm versus Goodwood. Ingle Farm, one vote, M. Wood. Ingle Farm, two votes, A. Kunde, and Goodwood, three votes, S. Strawbridge. Mawson Lakes against Modbury. One vote from Modbury, S. Sharma. Two votes, Mawson Lakes, J. Singh, and three votes from Modbury, J. Riza. We now look at Old Ignatians v. Hectorville. From Hectorville, one vote, K. Banger. Two votes, Old Ignatians, A. Lands. And three votes, Hectorville, T. Ahern. Payne and V. Parahills. One vote, Parahills, C. Callias. Two votes, yeah, nine, I was surprised too. Uh, two votes, Payne and J. Stagg. And three votes, Parahills, K. Park. Parko, well done. Move into 
Round 11 now for A3. Brahma Lodge v Modbury, the game. One vote, Brahma Lodge, L Partridge. Two votes, Brahma Lodge, T Durant. And three votes, Brahma Lodge, A Summerton. Para Hills v Ingle Farm. One vote, Ingle Farm, M Pilcher. Two votes, Ingle Farm, H Vishnu. And three votes, Ingle Farm, L Robinson. Move into Gubbard v Old Ignatians. One vote, Old Ignatians, J. Armfield. Two votes, Goodwood, uh, Roloffs. And three votes, Old Ignatians, C. Caroni. Hectorville now, Mawson, V. Mawson Lakes. Mawson Lakes, one vote, M. Abassi. Two votes, Hectorville. R. Ikaniaki and three votes Hectorville K. Banga. <laughs> Final game Fulham v. Paynham. One vote Paynham D. Dolling. Two votes Paynham J. Richter Gilbert. And three votes, Paynham, Jay Sadler. As we have a look now at the final leaderboard, the A3 player of the year. In third place, tie on 10 from Hectorville, D. Haman, Fulham, R. Shemansky, Hectorville, R. Ekenyaki, and uh, Brahma Lodge, T. Durant, all with 10. From Hectorville with uh, 12 votes, Kate Banger. But the winner of the award for the A3 Player of the Year from Paynham with 13 votes, Joseph Richter Gilbert. Pretty fat year for you, mate. You've done well. Oh, yeah, not, not half bad. It was good to contribute a little bit, yeah. Just, um, when did you last have a haircut? <laughs> oh, I think my mum did it. So it's pretty poor, yeah. <laughs> Probably a few months ago. Yeah, that doesn't surprise too many people in the room, I wouldn't have thought. Your year, mate, with the Royals, I mean, yeah. Oh, well, mate, I... Hey. <laughs> I set the trends, I don't follow them. That's fine. Yeah, my dad's told me. <laughs> For you, what about the boys and just yeah, your year that you've had, mate? Just fantastic. Oh, yeah, we just need one more win, though. That's it. That's all I can think of, really. Just but w w how do you go about that? That thinking, what's it going to be? Wednesday night now, you, a couple of nights before the game starts. What, what's the prep going to be? You got a training session before it happens? Yeah, we, we had yesterday, and we've got tomorrow night. Uh, we've got a lot of boys coming out from lower grades to help us out. So we've got a really good culture going on. Um, we're just taking it simple, really, not getting too far ahead of ourselves. We know how good of a quality side Hectorville can be. So, yeah, we just can't take anything for granted and control the things we can. And yeah, There's a little bit of rivalry between the two. Just hit, listen to the skippers having a chat. I mean, there's a, they'll bring something to the table. Don't you worry about that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, they've got some stars. They've got some players that we've been keeping an eye on. <laughs> yeah. Who are they? Oh, well, K Banger, for one. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah he, he seems like quite the enigma. Tell us what happens after you've had a fantastic year, you win, 
What's going on back at the club and then the going away trip? What, what's anything organised yet? Uh, we're, we're not getting too far ahead of ourselves, but there will definitely be some plans. Um, <laughs> not too sure about a trip. Might get a fishing trip going. <laughs> Probably no barley trips, but... <laughs> Mate, you've had a fantastic year. I hope it goes well for you. Congratulations, bud. Well done, mate. Can't believe it. He touched my hair. Christ. Yeah. Nothing going on with this thing. Okay, that'll look. Chance now to uh, have a chat. We move into A2. I'm really looking forward to this. And when you talk about rivalry and you talk about history and two foundation members of the Adelaide Turf Cricket Association to find themselves in the A2 competition. Just unbelievable playing for that flag. From Prince Alfred Old Collegians, their skipper Nick Clayfield. And from St Peter's Old Collegians, Sam McClay. Please make them welcome. Well done. Fair chance that uh, fair chance you'll have your nose in front if he doesn't turn up like he uh, yeah, did tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, mate. Good. We all good. What's uh, yeah? I've spoken to the other guys. What's the preparation? But I mean, just this in, amazing. Well, it's not a rivalry. It's a respect for both clubs that have been around the competition for so long. It's pretty neat to find yourselves in this wonderful game. Yeah, I think uh, with both sides coming down last year, we were pretty keen to go back up. So, big game uh, and a lot on the on the end of it. So, what's happened with the uh, both both schools and the, the old scholars? Of course, they'll, they'll be there and they'll be supportive. I mean, what's the situation? What time they get in there? They're going to beat you blokes there, and yeah, what what what's going to be happening? What's the expectation? Uh, well, we got into Colon at PAC that weekend, so hopefully we can get a good supporter. Supporter group, so hopefully they get to the uh, intercol in the morning and head over in the afternoon. So, coffees in the morning and beers in the afternoon. <laughs> Where Where's the game going to be played? Out of Park Nine, so new facilities, looking very nice. So, yeah, big weekend. It's been a massive uh, development for the school, I mean, yeah, to get that to happen and, yeah, to, to invite people there and, and to have it. You know, local residents, they'll be coming along. You, have you. Have you uh, 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 have, have you told any of them that it's happening or are they all going to get stuffed, you pricks? Yeah, yeah they might be fuming with the uh, <laughs> celebrations for whoever, whoever gets it done, but um, nah, pretty keen to get in there and, um, yeah. Why are you going to win, mate? Uh, good question. Thank no, you. look, we've had a good year. Um, these guys were too good a few weeks ago, but we had a uh, good weekend against Brighton, so if we can just show that determination and... You know, just a bit of patience and keep the nerve. I think we'll be good. What, what, what do you take from that? Is it just a belief that, that being able to deliver that sort of thing in, in a crucial game and to get the win knowing now that you've got such an important one ahead of you? How do you believe that? You talk about that the whole, the whole week, obviously. Yeah, look, I mean, Brighton are a very good club, so to beat them away you know, was a great achievement by our guys. Um, we'd had a good, you know, good year up until the last couple of rounds, so... Yeah, it's just, you know, going in with a bit of momentum, um, showing what we can do to ourselves, most importantly, and, you know, if we can show a good form on the weekend, then, you know, hopefully we'll give these guys a bit of a test. What happens when you do get the win and you sneak in and, uh, yeah, you're still just sitting around and out on the main oval on Monday morning and the kids turn up for school? Yeah, what, uh, yeah, how do you go about that? How do you explain that to the, uh, the developmental kids of the future of our state? Uh, no, I don't know, I think we'll uh, just focus on the weekend and <laughs> deal with uh, whatever happens after that once, once we get it done. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's going to be a bit of fun. It's an amazing respect for, for both parties involved in it. I mean, it's just so cool to be a part of it. Yeah, definitely. Um, we're bloody excited. So, uh, good year all round and we're, it's all sort of come together at the right time. So, yeah, very excited to get into it. Right, well, that's fine. You do it so very, very well. I know there's so, so much respect for both. So play well, enjoy the game. The spirit of the game will be uh, imminent there without any problems. Thanks, guys. Go well. Beautiful. Thank you, guys. Good. Thank you, mate. Well, 
My pleasure now, if I can please, to ask the President of the ATC USA, uh, Ken Bartleson, to present the A2 Individual Batting and Bowling Awards as Ken makes his way. He'll stay up as well as we go through for Player of the Year. A2 grade. Batting. 532 runs from Jeps Cross. Arkas Saha. We presume, um, yeah, we presumed you won it. It's got your friggin' name on it, so you don't have to hold it up. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Well done. Uh, A2 grade, the bowling. Prince Alfred Old Collegians, 40 wickets. Nick Clayfield. Well done, Nick. We just had him up. Well done, buddy. Time for us now to read the votes, the individual games for rounds 10 for the A2 competition. This match, Woodville Recobite versus Ronella. One vote, Ronella. K. Petty. Two vote, Woodville Recobite. J. Rosenthal. Three votes, Woodville Recobite. R. Potter. Walkerville v the, the Adelaide Lions. One vote, Adelaide Lions. S. Karuna Ratni. Two vote, Adelaide Lions. R. Premachandra. And three votes, Adelaide Lions. H. Lakshita. Not bad. Yeah, not bad. Ross Trevor v Unley. Unley. D, one vote. D, Rathnayake. <laughs> Any dangerous Smithy getting a vote in this fucking competition? <laughs> Ross Trevor, D, Fitzsimmons, two votes. And three votes from Ross Trevor. Patrick Page. Yay! Well done, Pagey. Good lad. Page 18 of 24. BOC v Spock. A lead in to the grand final. From Prince Alfred Old Collegians. One vote, W. Linky. Two votes, Prince Alfred Old Collegians in Clayfield. And three votes, again, from Prince Alfred Old Collegians, A. Marshall. Jeps Cross. V. Goodwood. Jeps Cross, one vote. V. Markim. Two votes. Goodwood. J. Santanek. And three votes. Jeps Cross, S. Schooley. Very surprised schools if you'll be coming up to get the award, but uh, well done, but from the club. Brighton v Golden Grove, one vote Golden Grove v Whitehead, two votes Golden Grove C Moran and three votes Brighton v Kilo. We move now into round 11 for the A2 competition. Adelaide Lions versus Brighton. From Brighton, one vote, S. McInerney. Two votes, Brighton, M. Wormsley-Pace. 
and three votes. Adelaide Lions, W. Thelina. Golden Grove v. Prince Alfred Old Collegians. One vote. POC, A. Marshall. Two votes. Golden Grove v. Anderson. And three votes. POC, N. Clayfield. Goodwood v. Ross Trevor. One vote. Ross Trevor, R. Thomas. Two votes. Ross Trevor, M. Simpson. And three votes from Ross Trevor, P. Page. Renella v. Jeps Cross. Renella, one vote. R. Colville. Two votes, Renella. R. Gab. And three votes, Renella K. Petty. Spock versus Woody Rechabites. One vote. Spock. S. McClay. Two votes, Woodville Rechabite. J. Rosenthal. And three votes, Woody Rechabites. L. Langmead. Unley versus Walkerville now. Round 11. One vote, Unley. E. Rice. Two votes, Walkerville, S. Blackmore, and three votes, Walkerville, M. Perilli. Right. So we look at the final leaders board in uh, A2 for the player of the year. With uh, 12 votes, there's a couple there. Third place, S. Blackmore from Walkerville and Adelaide Lions are Premanchandra. Second place with 13 votes, both of them, Woodville Recobite, Golden Grove, Jay Rosenthal and C. Moran, the winner from the Adelaide Lions with 15 votes, Hasith Lakshita. Nothing there? Well, give him something. Yeah. Mate, congratulations to you. What a good year it's been. Thanks, yeah. Um, it's been a great year. It could have been better if you made the finals, but it is what it is. Good. Why didn't you make the finals? Were you just crap when you needed to be good? Yeah, what, what, what caused that? I don't know. We've been crap all year, but it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, seriously. Like, um, we, we did well with bowling, but pretty much all year we had some um, hiccups with batting, so... Yeah. That was a main letdown for the whole um, season and mainly for the finals as well. So, How are you going to fix that with the, uh, with the batting? I mean, you can, you're the player of the championship, a player of the series. I mean, you can't do everything, can you? Oh, we can reverse the batting order and they can go opening and then problem fix. And how's that going to go when you go and speak to the coach and the captain and say that you should be doing that? Oh, they're there, so I think it should be all right. So okay. yeah. I can just flash this and maybe do something. <laughs> goodness sake. Oh, sorry, nearly said the wrong thing there. Yeah. Um, we have got to go to draw the raffle. And this is such a terrific part of the night, uh, the way this gets done. It is just brilliant. Uh, who's doing that for us? You are? Right. You've got the raffle. Now, just with the raffle, we have four prizes, terrific prizes we have, the Terrific, uh, the accommodation and dining here at the Arkabar, their support, thank you so much, just fantastic. The luxury spa suite, overnight stay and dinner. The Herringbone Restaurant, another voucher here at $100. The Drummond Golf Value, there's two of those at 200 And the Woodstock Wines are here to my right, there's a dozen of the Woodstock. So 300 200 the Drummond, Herringbone and the 350 So what you've got to do is, if you win a prize... 
You, there's no order. Thank you. All you've got to do is come up and grab the one you want. I'll leave it to uh, the Adelaide Turf Cricket Umpires and Scorers Association to manage this process. Thank you. Thanks, Flipper. As we said, we've got four prizes. Flipper's going to draw the first prize. Where you go, Flipper. Mull it in. And the winner is... If, if you've got a blue ticket with the number A36, you'll be... You'll be You'll be pretty pissed off. You were one off. It was A37. So, yeah. You suck me in. <laughs> A37. Blue. Woody. Come up. There's nothing wrong with the, all the umpires winning all for, four prizes. Come up, Woody. Come up. Come up. Show us your legs. Uh, he's going to go for the $200 Drum and Golf Award. Uh, Woody, where do you play at? Where, what course do you play at? Higher Combe. On a handicap of? 18. He's a handicap of 18. He's a burglar. This one here is a D, purple, 06. Hello, D Purple 06. Popey, is that you? Oh, Robbo. Quite surprised he dipped into his pocket. He's up too, mate. See, you've got, you've got the Arkabar Night Stay. I actually won that a few years ago. It's actually quite nice. And he's going to go to the restaurant, the Herringbone. Yeah, okay? Restaurant, well done, mate. Well done, Thank you. Beautiful, mate. Congrats. Good luck. Third prize. While you're there. While you're here, you might well draw it. Hold on, come back, come back, come back, come back. Draw. Uh, orange ticket, A39. A39 orange ticket. Any, anyone feeling the love? Tom Dawson is... I didn't hear what you said, Tom. Uh, that's totally correct. Is it, is it redraw? Bring it up, Tom. I had to put up to, with Tom on the weekend, so... Hopefully, hopefully you can make a decision quickly. Where are you going, Tommy? The, uh, you've got the wine or you've got the accommodation? Tom's gone the accommodation. All right. Congratulations, mate. Can you draw? Go down deep, please. And the last prize is going to be the 12 bottles of wine from Woodstock Wines. Uh, Max Collett from Old Scotch. So thanks very much for Max. Is A twenty three blue? Hello, come in, Spinner. So, is it my winner? Oh, I'm, I'm a non. This is this is how it's going to roll, right? I'm a non red drinker. So let's re-roll. My draw. I tell you what, I tell you what, A22, 
Es bija gaidi. Hold on, it's, it's going to suck up into my, it's going up into my sleeve again. Okay, sorry about that. We're going to go again. Please get one right. <laughs> I, I tell you what, it's not far off either. It's a blue one, A34. Graham Wood. He's umpired nine A1 finals in a row. He's now putting it back in the booty again. We're going one more time. I'm out. I've only won two prizes and got nothing. Beautiful. That's a red. B24. Got one? We've got a winner. Margaret? Margaret Barbara. Well, you're not getting up, so congratulations. Well done. Ron, you might need another stick, mate. Instead of the one you got, you might need two after that. Congratulations, everyone. Thank you. Hold on. Just a quick one. Can everyone check under their chair? There's a $50 voucher from the Arkabar. And if you if you live it in one of those um, coaches up there, there's no seats. So bad luck. You got it. The the, the blonde-headed lady from Recabites. I'm hearing. <laughs> I got that one as well. <laughs> Uh, this lady apparently runs the bar at Recabites, I'm hearing. And I, how would I know that with Andrew Tyson, I'm hearing? <laughs> He's there every second week and, along with Goodwood. Congratulations, well done. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Oh, no, no kiss for me? No kiss for me? No kiss for me? Okay, yeah, now we're talking. Now we're talking. Okay, thanks very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Well done again, and thank you for your support with the raffle. Always a bit of fun. My chance to chat now with the uh, A1 captains, and a very exciting time for both clubs from Para Hills. Trav, up you come, buddy, please. Travis Wordsworth, thank you. And from Goodwood, Alfie Gleadle, thank you. We know who the captains are, so you don't need to have your name up there for this, Trav. Yeah, it would be nice, though, because a lot of people are watching, so I'm not sure if they will see who I am, but it's Trav, the Prince of Atka. <coughs> Alfie, what are you going to um, put up with that shit the whole fucking weekend? Yeah, how are you going to go, bud? Well, I don't, like my, I don't like the sound of my own voice as much as him, so... <laughs> How's it been a good one? I mean, yeah, the, the new facility there now, the way it's been embraced by the local public, just fantastic. Yeah, it's good. Um, we had a, a couple of junior sides win finals this weekend, so a lot of positives to come. Trav wants to say something, so, yeah, I'll give him the chance. What do you got for me? Excellent. So, yeah, but what are you... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, with the club and how it's gone about it, just your play, I mean, it's just so strong, isn't it? Just so calm and organised. Yeah, it is. Uh, we've got a young side this year and uh, I mean, we've just come about it the same way we did last year and whether there's been ups and downs this year compared to last year and we've made finals again, so it's po positives all around. Yeah, it's going to be pretty neat, isn't it? For you, anything of worth? Hey, you ask him, I'll answer it. Um, can you tell us what hyper 
hypothesis theorem is as far as um, yeah, global warming? Uh, yeah, not sure, but A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Oh, excellent. I mean, just it's so simple when you get it right like that sort of thing. I mean, how easy do you bring that to the table on the weekend? M make it simple? <laughs> we never make it simple, as quite you're aware. Um, a lot of things drawn up on the uh, whiteboard, things that a lot of people from Parry Hills don't understand. Um, me being the first one to achieve uni was obviously a very good thing. So, so when you say you achieved uni, did you, what, you drove past it or, you know, what, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, you got me there. <laughs> I've got nothing for that, to be honest. <laughs> what happens, mate? I mean, it, it, you're just having the bloody time of your life. I mean, that's what it's about. You're having a game of bloody cricket and, and you might be going to lift a premiership trophy. How cool. Yeah, no, obviously, grand final rematch. Um, unfortunately, last year, rain played a part. Um, obviously, good in front of that game. But um, them coming out to our turf, as you well, well know, mate, you don't rock up. In your car, you know, because you know what happens, you end up in stilts, so um, hopefully they got a bus and, yeah, you never know, they might actually hang around for a beer like not some other clubs this year, which was good. <laughs> What's it going to be, bud? I mean, you know, you, the group's together and they've been so well right through the year, the performance have just been so organised and disciplined, that's what you bring to the table. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, our two-day record is pretty good for the season and last season, so... If we can just perform like we, we know we can, then hopefully we can get over the line. You'll be fine. You'll do well. How's uh, what's been organised for the post-match party? We're not sure if it's going to end up on Sunday because obviously semi-final, we, we party Sunday. Obviously, Ingle Farm didn't rock up, which was nice. Um, so, yeah, we're looking to you know, maybe actually make it to a Monday because I've actually booked up Monday like most of the players. So hopefully we make it to there and I'm sure it will go that long. <laughs> Certainly be keeping an eye on the news reports, uh, yeah, from out that side of town. You've had fantastic years, both of you. Shake hands and go well, boys. Well done. Really appreciate it. Thanks, mate. Oh. Just fantastic, isn't it, Travi boy? And Alf, that'll be a terrific game, no doubt about it. My pleasure. Now, if you'd be good enough to come forward. Uh, Mark Hansen, uh, what a champion. His record just absolutely outstanding. Where are you, Mark? Please, if you come forward. You're going to present the A1 individual bowling. And this now is known as the Mark Hansen A1 Batting Award. Just fantastic, buddy. So well done to you. Congratulations. <laughs> But the Mark Hansen, the A1 Premier Grade Batting Award for this season from Goodwood, 576 runs, Callum Broderick. Congratulations, mate. And with the ball in uh, A1 this year, fantastic year, really was such a strong year. From Old Scotch, uh, well done to you, mate. 45 poles, Hamish Winter Irving. Well done, mate. Cheers. Now my opportunity to read the votes from uh, rounds 10 for A1 in Adelaide Turf for the year. The match that I refer to, Goodwood versus Old Scotch. From Goodwood, L Hutchinson, one vote. Two votes, Old Scotch, H Winter Irving. Three votes, Goodwood, R, Rowe.
Hope Valley versus Paraka. One vote, Hope Valley. D, Giles. Two votes, Paraka. Y, Ready Redham. And three votes, Hope Valley. S. Scott. Marion v. Flinders Park. From Marion, one vote, S. Williams. From Marion, two votes, P. Wilson. From Flinders Park, three votes, O. McDowell. Well done, Macca. Para Hills versus Grange. Para Hills, one vote, T. Rowling. Grange, two votes, M. McDonald. And three votes, Para Hills, T. Wordsworth. Port Districts versus Trinity Old Scholars. Port Districts, one vote. S. Kamburu Gamawa. <laughs> Two votes. Trinity Old Scholars. S. Lanus. And three votes. Trinity Old Scholars. Woodsy, well done to you, mate. Good. Woodville South v Ingle Farm now. One vote, Ingle Farm, B, Vincey. Two votes, Ingle Farm, M, Barber. And three votes, Woodville South, M, Kukonitz. <laughs> We're looking now for round 11 in the A1 competition. Flinders Park v Port Districts. One vote, Port Districts. A, Sitiku. Two votes, Port Districts. L, Minhas. And three votes, Flinders Park. O, McDowell. <laughs> Grange v Hope Valley. One vote from Grange. C. Sayers. <laughs> Two votes. Hope Valley. O. Pennell. And three votes. Hope Valley. S. Scott. <laughs> Ingle Farm v. Marion. One vote. Ingle Farm. J. Hannigan. Two votes. Two votes. Marion. S. Williams. And three votes, Ingle Farm, M. Pitt. Old Scotch v. Woodville South. One vote, Old Scotch, J. O'Connell. Two votes, Woody Souths, A. Garlic. And three votes, Woodville South, B. Vincey. Couple to go, Paraka v. Goodwood now. Goodwood, one vote. O. Jackson, two votes, Paraka M. Herman, and three votes, Paraka Y. Reddy Radham. Trinity V. Para Hills, one vote, Para Hills, G. Carey. He's not going to win it. <laughs> two votes, Para Hills, H. Caton, terrific year. And three votes, Para Hills, T. Baker. Our final leaders board for the A1, the Stephen Snyder medal for the A1 player of the year. In third place, 14 votes from Paraka, Matthew Herman. 15 votes, Para Hills in second place, Travis Wordsworth. But our winner from Old Scotch, 21 votes, Hamish Winter Irving.
Pretty neat to be recognised that way. What a great year for you, pal. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was a decent year, but um, unfortunately, win, winning the grand final A2 last year and we missed the finals was pretty disappointing. So, um, yeah, we'll try and rebuild and we stayed up, so we'll come back better and stronger next year. So, yeah. what, what happens? We, we are that close. Was, is it that's why it's so frustrating? You had so much, uh, you're, you're around the place and you teased them a little bit. Is it just frustrating, annoying? Yeah, but when you lose seven out of your premiership side from last year, it's pretty hard to build on that. So um, we had a lot of young blokes come in, a couple of blokes come back. Um, so we'll work with that and um, come back better and stronger. Um, and then there was games we lost within the last over or a few runs short. So, yeah. It's, but that's the game of cricket, isn't it? It sends those challenges, it gives you that opportunity, but how do you learn from that? How do you get better and, and uh, be able to put something together? Um, I think it's just experience. Um, we've got, obviously, yeah, a lot of young guys. We just need a couple more mature heads and um, a few mature guys through our middle batting order and, uh, yeah, we'll be right. You go into those rooms there at Old Scotch in the pavilion, you look up on that honour board and you, you, know, you look at the, some of the players that have played there and some who've captained the first 11 and gone on to play for Australia. I mean, that must be pretty exciting, mustn't it? Is that you? Yeah. Well, I've only been there two years, so I wouldn't have looked up there yet. I fucking suggest you do. And, yeah. Congratulations, mate. Well done. Thanks, mate. <laughs> yeah, I've only been there two years. I haven't looked at the fucking book. Very, very important award that we go to next. Congrats, Hamish. Well done, you. The, um, the, the Spirit of Cricket Award, it's such an important um, and, and so vitally important of what it does for the game, the great game of cricket that's been played at a global level now for so long. And, uh, yeah, to... A, to uh, have implemented this and to seeing the clubs that have won it and the way they've gone about it, it's just, it is fantastic. The Spirit of Cricket Award and uh, uh, named after this great man, Jeff Emmel, over 640 games in Adelaide Turf and SA Veterans, incredible. Over 10,000 runs that he's made, over 1,000 wickets he's taken. There's no better person in this room that epitomises the spirit of the game. To present the award, please make him welcome. Red, Jeff Hamill. Uh, thank you, Flipper. Thank you, everyone. Uh, great job again, Flipper. You never, you never disappoint. You never disappoint. And it's, a, it's just great to come to this turnout every year and, uh, and get the same old stuff from you. It's fantastic. It's just, it's just, um, but no, we love it. We love it. Um, look, firstly to the umpires who, the umpires who buy into this award, um, their integrity is very important to it and uh, their diligence is very, very important to it as well. And I know they take it seriously. And uh, I, know, I know all the clubs take it seriously. Um, and I've seen some really good signs over the years of, of club, clubs who used to be really rivals and there was a bit of niggle, but they're getting on better. Uh, they're having a drink after the game and they're doing that sort of stuff. I love it. Um, there, look, there are still a few rabbits out there on the field. I think we can all agree on that. But uh, generally, I think things are getting better. And um, I just hope that continues. This year, the Spirit of Cricket Award goes to a club that has won it before. They may have even won it twice before. The Ranella Cricket Club. It's getting boring, isn't it? I don't even get to look at the, uh, at the tables during the year. So it's all a surprise to me as well. Well done. Come on up here, mate.
I agree. I knew it was three. Hold on. Come over here. We'll have the photo taken. No, no, because it's so important that it was a tie this year, so old Ignatius won this well. That's all right. There was a tie. Hey. <laughs> eh? And well done to, Saint, uh, to Old Ignatians Cricket Club. They also won the Spirit of Cricket Award. You thought we'd forgotten you, didn't you? But we had. Thanks very much. Honour. Well done, mate. Thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah, well done. That's right. Oh, Good Thank work. You. Thanks, Ripper. <laughs> Oh, brilliant, Red. Well done. It could not. Yes, indeed. Just the Old Ignatians and the Ranella Cricket Clubs tied for the win. That final leaders board. And when you look at these numbers, just incredible. 95.5, Fulham 95, Jeps Cross and Spock at 91.5. The spirit of cricket, the final leaders board. Congratulations to those clubs. Well done. Richard, I'm going to ask you to come up as we make the last of our presentations, please. Thank you. We're going to announce the Adelaide Turf Cricket Association Women's Team of the Year. We'll get you to stay up on stage, please, with your plucks, those that are present, and uh, we'll get the photos done from up here. And we'll do the same with the men's team as well. Thank you. An important time that we acknowledge these wonderful performers right through the season. Please. The Adelaide Turf Cricket Association Women's Team of the Year is as follows. From Para Hills, Tamara Clapton. From Adelaide, Kylie Rattray. Ranella, Joe Cook. Paynham, Kate Evans. Port Adelaide, Becky Havis, what a year. Woodville South, Tina Lester. Paynham, Melissa Fanning. West Torrens, Cadence Murdoch. Brighton, Grace Flanagan. And in that team of the year, from Woodville South, Ellie Tilly, our Adelaide Turf Women's Team of the Year. Congratulations, ladies. Well done. Just brilliant. So well. Good job, mate. The next announcement is for that of the ATCA Men's Team of the Year. My pleasure to announce the following. From Ingle Farm, Matthew Kukonitz. Goodwood, Callum Broderick, from Para Hills, what a year he's had. Harry Caton, well done, Harry, good lad. Woodville South, Mark White. Paraka, Matthew Herman. Jeps Cross, Arka Saha. From Grange, Chad Sayers. Port District, Shaminda Aranga. Old Scotch, no surprise, is in the team. Hamish Winter Irving. From Grange, Michael McDonald. From the Adelaide Lions, Hasith Lakshita. And from Prince Alfred Old Collegians, Nick. Clayfield, our Adelaide Turf Men's Team of the Year. Please come up, grab the awards. And stay for the photos, please.
Ah, well done, man. And the last two announcements that need to be made that we acknowledge for the year and terrific year with their decision making, etc., and keeping the game rolling, our umpires for the, of the year. And I refer to Graham Wood and Michael Tripodi. Congratulations, gentlemen. Well done. Both won a prize in the raffle too, so well done to you. Richard, my pleasure to pass it to you to uh, wrap things up. We've done very, very well. Thanks for your support, everyone. Richard Havey, please. Thanks. Uh, before you go, Wayne, just stay here. Um, before we sign off, we'd ask their Master of Ceremonies, Mr Wayne Phillips, Aussie cap number 320. Um, and we won't mention the one-day cap number. Um, correct. <laughs> to accept a small gift and appreciation of your great work and fronts up every year. Thanks, mate. And you've done a fantastic job in a professional manner. Thank you very much. Um, now, as the evening comes to an end, I wish to thank Taylor Skinner from the Arkaba Hotel and its staff for hosting us tonight at this wonderful venue. Um, special thanks to our Executive Officer, David Heiser, who has carried the stresses of organising this large event on his shoulders for the last few weeks. Um, unfortunately, it's become too much for him. We've had to call Shane McMillan from the sub as a uh, super sub. I've come on at the last minute to uh, put the finishing touches, so well done to both of them. Um, and as we approach another exciting weekend of cricket, I say well done to all the teams that have made it through to the grand finals of each division and the umpires on their respective appointments. And congratulations to all teams in women's, juniors and T20 cricket that have already tasted premiership success. To the winners, enjoy your celebrations and to the runners-up, although the loss is a bit of pill to swallow immediately post-game, as I'm sure we've all been there, I quote the words of the famous AFL coach, the late Alan Yabby Jeans, the sun will always come up in the morning. Thank you for your attendance, enjoy your winter break, and God willing, we're all back here again in the second week of October. And safe trip home tonight. Thank you. Thank you.